Now, this one's, now we're going to get to the time. When are they coming? We're getting tired of looking at pictures. When are they coming? I'm tired of looking at this. When are they coming down to Earth? So this one actually suggested there was a solar eclipse on August. This one actually suggested there'd be just seven more solar eclipses until they come. And I'll show you how they did it. How long is that? Not that long, is it? About three years? Seven eclipses? And I'll show you how they did it. Is that interesting? Okay. Look at this amazing thing. Photo by Lucy. That's in Etchelhampton, not far from Devizes. This amazing thing, that's a person. August 10th. Photo by Lucy. There's a town of Mixon over there. And, and actually, I had to find out what it meant because it wasn't clear. There's something called spherical gears or planetary gears, and that's what we're looking at here. It, and these little things are turning. like The planets are like gears turning in the sky, and that's like one, two, three of these things. I've got a, I've got a uh, movie of this. It's sort of like gears. The planetary gears, I'll just continue on when you see easily. It's like this. So the Earth and the Sun are all turning through space. It's sort of astronomical diagram. Earth and Sun, Earth blue and Sun yellow, are like two mechanical gears which are rotating in the plane of the solar ecliptic. And that's, that's actually the metaphor here. Because it's, it's an eclipse. This is during for an eclipse, they're marking it. A solar eclipse. So it's very cool. If you, you just look at that, you think, the mind behind that, what IQ do you think the crop artist has to have done a picture like this? 150? 180? <laughs> very high. It's very hard for me just to understand what he's done, but imagine thinking it for the first time. So we're talking about super intelligent inter extraterrestrials, okay? I mean, I agree if you're, b I feel bamboozled. It took me a long time to understand this. Now, the interesting thing is when you see where it was drawn, I try to figure out what would it meant. And finally, you can sort of see this like serpent or like serpent image. They drew it right there. Can you see the big number seven? Seven more eclipses. That's the symbolism, seven eclipses. He's, he's hiking toward Earth. Where did the number seven come from? In the landscape. A big white shape of a seven. Right. So what happens is sometimes the information's in the landscape and sometimes in the crop picture. They'll look at the landscape and they might see this image with a seven and they'll draw a crop picture based on what they see in the landscape. It's not just the f crop picture first. The landscape may come before the crop picture. So there's an interplay. So when you want to interpret it, you have to assemble the complete image. Did I explain that? Yeah. What happened to What died here? Of the crop picture and landscape together. Is, so they obviously, they've chosen a very particular place for this. So they draw a specific location. So these two kinds of information inter overlap. So if you want to interpret it, you have to put it in the landscape and look at like a bigger picture. You have to look at the bigger picture and try to see, understand what's the crop artist trying to say. So he draws a picture of a sol day of a solar eclipse. When the solar eclipse was happening, he draws the planetary gears making the solar eclipse. And they have a big number seven. Did you follow that logic? A bit hard to follow, isn't it? Did you find it easy or hard to follow? Hard to follow. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> but that's actually the, the way they, they communicate. It's very complex. You have to have a, they're, they're very smart, these people, okay? Now, this one's getting easier. I'm just having to show you, I'm not actually choosing these, I'm just showing you what they've done. This one actually shows a space shuttle coming down, and there's a clock in its wheels. So evidently, we're talking about not long. We have to read the clock. So I saw this one, obviously the shape of a space shuttle coming down a little road, and this is its tail wheel here, and this is its skid mark. This was only there for a couple of weeks. And there's a little clock in its wheel coming down. You can see the shape of the space shuttle now, coming down in the landscape. And they drew it right here next to where the little tail would hit. <laughs> it's pretty clever, isn't it? That's the meaning of the space shuttles coming into land. Uh, do you see that? It's a pretty impressive thing, isn't it? Draw it right there. And that's a skid mark. This is what the skid mark looked like. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I got this image of a space shuttle coming in. So now we just have to read the clock. How do we read the clock? What time, what time are they telling us? That's the trick. So here's another one. There's the crop picture. It's coming into land. This is the crop picture. And this is some wheels being used by NASA for their Mars probes. So evidently you're basing it on that image. The NAR, they actually know what wheels NASA is using of the Mars probes. And they're basing it. That's how they base the crop picture on that image. They're following everything NASA is doing as well. 
So reading the clock, here I put it in, I changed the color to make it easier to see. The wheel's turning that way, so the clock has to be turning that way. And you can actually read some numbers off the clock. I won't get into it, but you could interpret this as a, a date in 2021. I won't get into it, but you, you can, it looks like 2.30, or, anyway, I'll come back to this more later. You know, I'll have another section of the talk. You can try to read the clock. It's definitely a clock. We've got hour, minute, second, don't we? So there's definitely a clock. That's the, the puzzle is to read the clock, and then you know when the space shuttle is going to land. That's the definition of the puzzle. That's what they're asking us to do, quite obviously. It's a puzzle. It's like a Sudoku puzzle. We'll come back to it. Everybody agree that's a puzzle? I haven't solved it, but we know what the, we know what the question they're asking. The clock tells us in the wheel, tells us when are they going to land. So, there are in summary, there are many hints of an ET landing soon. Many hints. So will an extraterrestrial spacecraft piloted by the crop artist land somewhere on Earth in the near future? This is what we're coming to now. And you see now why my Facebook page was shut down <laughs> and banned. I can't go on Facebook again. The intel agents knocked me out. Now this is obviously not very sensitive information. They don't want me spreading it. We'll see if it stays on YouTube. Do you think this is now why crop circles are being heavily censored? Because they don't want everybody, everybody to know that it's not that long till some ET spaceship comes and lands on Earth without a plausible explanation? That why I touched a sensitive subject? And I can't say exactly when, but it's not going to be that long. I'd be very surprised if in the 2020s they don't land. Maybe even early, maybe the early part of the 2020s, okay? These friendly people. He's very friendly. There's no thing to be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of these people. Okay, so you can see that might be a sensitive government subject, wouldn't it? So, here it is. Here's from 2013. Here's a. Just in case you don't believe me, they're going to land. Look at this. This was a famous crop picture in 2013. It clearly shows a triangular UFO. There it is, coming into land on a runway. There's no doubt this is a UFO flying into land, and you can even see the little image of a triangle right there. Flying into land. It looks like the letter Q, incidentally, the big thing here, the big green Q. So I think unambiguously, we would agree this is an alien spaceship coming into land, the image. Alien made, and at some point, they're going to come into land soon. Are you happy or not happy with that? Let's zoom in a little bit. There's a people sitting in the middle over here. That's a people, I guess, you know, people like to visit it, so they're sitting in the middle. And just look at this. There's never been a, I guess there have been people, look how big it is. And there were people there watching the whole time, and there was nobody there. They didn't even hear or see anything. They didn't get anything on their cameras till 4 a.m. They got still shots at 4 a.m., but they didn't see anything happening. It just happened invisibly within about a few hundred meters of them. There were four people there. So it's magic. They appear by magic. There's no orbs nor anything. They didn't see anything. It's just amazing, isn't it? Now, what does this mean? Why would they draw this? And here's another thing. Not only was it there, but it lined up with Silbury Hill exactly. So it's aligned exactly like with the hill. In other words, this gentleman with the feathered headdress is coming to the hill. Okay? He's coming. This gentleman, who, this is his symbol, this E.T. gentleman, is coming to the hill. It won't be long. I told you, you don't have to wait that long. And there are Mayan symbols around the outside, so we know who it is. It's the Mayan Quetzalcoatl, the, the great leader of the Mayans, who lived on Earth a long time ago, supposedly. He did say he was coming back, didn't he? Said he's coming back. There were crop circles that was carved out five, ten football fields wide. And what that was was a white, a clock pointing at this date. The Mayans are watching this date for the return of Quetzalcoatl, which, if you scroll down through here, is their Messiah. Now, it's a serpent, a fiery serpent. Now, guys, we know the Mayans, the Aztec, they didn't worship Jesus Christ. The serpent is Satan. They're expecting Satan, their Messiah, to stand up on the world scene during when these events take place. This video is not intended to spread fear, doom, and gloom. All it is intended for is to spread awareness and to awake. Guys, I hope you take heed to this warning. I hope you're having a great week. If you have any questions, just feel free to message me.